A Little Chapel, 2017. Jessie'd felt a chill, like a huge arachnid stabbed its needlepoint limbs into her vertebrae from the moment they started their hike. Massive spruce trees loomed over them and the ground swelled with mist where they stood on that damp, early morning. They were hiking through a remote part of Sweden where no one had been legally allowed for over 30 years after a wildlife preservation pact. People still do it all the time. I saw it on Reddit. Amber had said, Tourists do, locals don't. Apparently it's sacred to them, Cole said. Sacred? Some rich-ass couple bought the land and made it private property, Amber said. There was a trail, impossibly well-kept, which they followed for hours before the first sighting. It was 1 p.m. by then, and the trail led them out of the woods into a grassy clearing cliff which sat a peculiar miniature chapel. It was gothic but made of glistening wood, even in its sorry decrepit state. A tiny bell tower once rose from the A-frame roof but now sat awkwardly broken and slanted on its side. The door was a child's door, with torches on each side and a red stained glass high above it. Both walls had larger stained glass windows depicting a man in a black hat and jacket, or rose maybe, handing three little girls an apple. The eye stared at Jessie, marked her, she felt. She read from a gold plaque next to the door, which inexplicably was in English. A place to rest your head and pray to him, Mr. and Mrs. Cares. Must be the rich-ass couple responsible for the preservation pact, Jesse said. And that's when it hit Cole. But have we seen one animal since we came out here? I don't even hear any birds, she said. They'd been walking from where they came for another hour before the second sighting. The same miniature chapel smack dab in the middle of the fucking woods but it couldn't be the same, right? It was, and shared all the same broken features. And besides, they would have noticed it on the way up. They picked up the pace, but the longer they walked, the more often the chapel appeared and the more whole it became. With each sighting, Jessie felt the eyes staring through her. The trail as they knew it vanished beneath their feet, bit by bit, and the daylight faded quickly. They succumbed to panic, ran and screamed for help until they were miraculously at the clearing where everything had changed. This time, the chapel was gone but no one was brought any comfort. They hadn't accepted defeat yet, but planted their feet in the sand until morning. They'd be damned to go back through those woods in the dark. That was a good plan until a warm orange light gleamed through the trees. Help, they screamed as they ran for the light. They found its source in no time. The chapel was fully formed, torches lit on both sides of the door. What's more, the forest had completely changed without notice. All the spruce trees were replaced with bent, dead apple trees, each holding one apple with a single bite missing. The door creaked open, revealing the man from the windows, silhouetted by dripping red candles behind him. He removed his hat and his face seemed unfurled in several swooping flaps. Even in the dark, it was easy to make sense of. Three pairs of wings, each adorned with glowing red eyes, fanned out from behind his head and gazed upon them.